Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be putting together a totally silent Tiger Lake Nook using the new Akasa Turing TN Compact Fanless Case. This was specifically designed for the 11th Gen Tiger Lake NUX, and I happen to have an 1135G7 version right here. It's the smaller version, but if you did pick up the taller version of the 11th Gen NUX, it'll also work with this case, from the i3 all the way up to the i7. I love these new Tiger Lake Intel NUX. I've done reviews on several of them, and right here we have the 1135G7 version. It's the short version, but it's going to fit inside of this case just fine, and with the short version, Right out of the box, you actually don't get an option to add a 2.5 inch SSD, but we do have two M.2 slots in here. With the new Akasa case, it does actually come with everything, so you can also add a 2.5 inch to the short version of the NUC, but basically what we're going to do is pull the main board out of this NUC, remove the fan and the heatsink assembly, and put it inside of this fanless case. This whole case is made out of aluminum, and it's going to make contact with that Tiger Lake CPU, extracting all the heat. So what we're going to end up with is a fanless, totally silent 11th gen NUC. And if you've ever used an Intel NUC before, you know these things can get quite loud, especially when you up the TDP on these little chips. And they really perform very, very well when that TDP is all the way up. Along with all the hardware that's included with the Akasa case, we also get some feet and we can set this up in the vertical or horizontal position. We get two plates, so just in case you want to set it in the horizontal position, we'll have plates on each side, just giving it a little bit of a different look. And like I mentioned, it does come with a breakout board, so you can add a 2.5 inch SSD to this unit. And it also comes with an M.2 heatsink. It's an aluminum heatsink with a thermal pad on the back. I just went ahead and pulled the main board out of that i5 nook. This is a look at the built-in heatsink and the fan that comes with these Tiger Lake nooks. To tell you the truth, it does do a pretty decent job cooling this nook down, but that fan needs to be kicked up almost to 100% to keep it nice and cool when everything's at full boat, and it can get really loud. So when it comes down to it, this is actually really simple to put together. It does come with some thermal pads to go on the VRM for this little nook board. It also comes with its own thermal paste, but I'm going to opt to use some Cooler Master Master Gel here. And this does come with its own instructions, so it tells you exactly what to do. And with this setup here, I'm not going to be adding a 2.5 inch SSD. I'm just going to be using the M.2 SSD that I have pre-installed in the Nook. And once it's finished up, it looks something like this inside of the case. It comes with all of the hardware you need to mount everything up with. And now we only have one last decision. Do I want to run this in the horizontal position? We can put the feet on the bottom and the two sides on or I can go vertical, and I chose to go vertical with it. Personally, I think it looks really good in this position. I've only had it up and running for about 45 minutes, but what I need to do now is kind of do a reboot. We're going to go into the BIOS. I want to up the TDP on this 11th Gen i5. I'll get some updates out of the way, and I'm going to let this run for about four hours. I kind of want this case to get heat soaked. So there's definitely a few things I want to change in here. First up is going to be under cooling. And for this, we're just going to turn the fan off since we don't have the fan plugged in anymore. That way it doesn't throw any flags. Next up, power. Max performance enabled. We definitely want this checked. But under the Intel Dynamic Power Technology, I'm going to go to Custom. We're going to turn OS ACPI off. That way we can change this to 45 watts. And I mean, I could take this up to 100, but it's only going to go to about 45. So I'll just hit up 45. This is going to change that TDP. Burst mode looks good at around 64. Actually, let's just take it up to 70 just to make sure. We'll change the window time to 128. And our VR current limit, let's take this to 400. Really, when it comes down to it, I'm just maxing this thing out. It's only going to do what it's going to do. But uh, now we should have a sustained TDP of around 40 to 45 watts with a nice little burst on it. This should be good to go. And uh, I'm just going to save by pressing F10. Okay, so here we are. I've got the case fully assembled. As we saw in the BIOS, I've gone up to basically the maximum TDP, which is around 45 watts for this little chip here. I've been up and running for over four and a half hours, and I wanted to let it run this long just to get that case, you know, fully up to temperature. Done some updating, done some game installing, some benchmark installing, and the maximum temp we've hit so far, 55 degrees Celsius. It's looking pretty good so far, but I haven't put it through any, uh, you know, extreme tests, so let's go ahead and just run Cinebench. I'm not going to make you sit through this whole thing, because it is a 10-minute test, but I still wanted to get this out of the way. We'll go ahead and start the multi-core test. I'll bring my temperature up on screen, just so we can get a look here, and I'll let this run through. And I know it's a bit hard to see, but we're at 42 watts, so we are pretty much maxing out the TDP on this 1135G7, and uh, 
So far, so good. But we'll let this run. We got nine minutes to go. Let's see what happens. All right, so after that 10 minute test, uh, the maximum we hit was 75 degrees Celsius, which is actually looking really good. When this is in its regular case and the fan is set to performance, we can hit about 91 degrees Celsius and that fan is definitely kicking up. Through this whole test, I didn't hear a thing because it's absolutely silent with this passively cooled case. And 75 degrees Celsius might sound high for like a desktop CPU, but we're working with a mobile chip here running at about 42 watts. So yeah, this is definitely maxed out. I think it passed this test really well. And we've already dropped right back down to 31 degrees Celsius at idle. Now I'm going to run through a few PC games. I just want to put a load on that CPU and the GPU at the same time to see what this case does. i got about four games to test here. We'll just do 10 to 15 seconds of gameplay for each. And at the end of the gameplay, we'll take a look at the max CPU temperature on this thing. And after running through those four games, we hit a maximum CPU temperature of 78 degrees Celsius. Remember, we're coming off the back end of running Cinebench R23, which we only hit 76 there. But uh, in Cyberpunk 2077, I did see it spike up to 78, and that was the maximum we hit with this case installed. So yeah, we definitely dropped the temp on that CPU way down, and with the Nook in its stock case and the fan set to performance, it does sound like a jet engine. While gaming, I would hit a maximum of around 84 degrees Celsius in Cyberpunk 2077. But remember, I mean, it's making a ton of noise for this little tiny PC. This case does put out some heat because that's what it was designed to do. It was designed to extract the heat from that CPU and just expel it out of the case itself. But it never gets hot enough to burn you. So yeah, I'm actually really digging this case. You know, I do wish it was a bit smaller because we have added a lot of mass to this NUC, which was originally a very, very small PC. But... I can overlook this given that I now have a totally silent setup because like I mentioned, when the Nook was in its original case, fan to performance mode, you maxing out the CPU and GPU, it would sound like a jet engine, especially when you had that TDP up. But now with this case installed, it's totally silent and I can run this at that 45 watt max all day long and it's not going to overheat or thermal throttle on me. So yeah, this case did work out a lot better than I thought it would. Uh, one thing I would love to see changed here is the fingerprint magnet, you know, anodization that they used on this aluminum. If you touch it, you will leave fingerprints on it, so just make sure you have a microfiber cloth handy. But overall, it does work out really well. If you're looking to turn your NUC into a totally silent mini PC, this is something that I can highly recommend. And they do offer several different models for several different NUC configurations, and they even just put out a line for the ASUS PN50 and PN51, which are Ryzen-based mini PCs. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave a couple links in the description, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.